And now, a fireside chat with Arthur Bergeron. Hi, and uh, thanks for watching. For those of you who have uh, not seen these clips before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Um, I designed this call-in show to try to supplement the broader uh, themes that I cover in the many elder law seminars that I do at various councils on aging. The purpose of these is to really deal with very specific kinds of questions, the kinds of questions that I regularly get from um, folks who come to talk to me. Um, I've designed it as a call-in show, and I think I hear the next caller right now. Mr. Bergeron, I know you've explained this to me before, but I've forgotten. Mary and I get worried about what might happen if one of us goes into a nursing home. Will our assets be safe? Well, Frank, thanks, thanks for calling in. I know you've called in before, and I talk about you a lot in my uh, shows. Um, the question you're asking is probably the most common question that I get of all of all um, when I'm speaking to new clients. Folks come in, typically often married, and have been together for many years, and they're trying to make sure their assets are safe because they're getting older and they're worried about needing to qualify for Mass Health, the Massachusetts name the Medicaid program because they need nursing home care. What I tell them um, in response to that question, first of all, I talk to them about their assets. Typically they own a home, typically they have, you know, Frank might have uh, um, an IRA, an, IRA uh, an, an, um, uh, an individual retirement account, they may have a small annuity, they may have some cash. In that situation, uh, if one of them needs nursing home care today, suppose Mary fell down, broke her hip, found, finds herself needing nursing home care, and all of a sudden um, that nursing home care is going to need to be permanent. In that situation, um, Mary, while she is concerned, and Frank is concerned because they know that they can't afford to pay for that nursing home care privately, and they know that Medicare which is designed as health insurance for, um, and therefore is for people or to cover the cost of getting better, not the cost of staying the same. So Medicare won't cover more than 100 days in the nursing home. Um, so they're very concerned because they really can't afford it privately. Um, but the key is that they have the ability immediately or almost immediately to qualify for Mass Health. Mass Health is the Massachusetts name for the federal Medicaid program while Mary, in order to qualify for Mass Health, has to show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets. Frank, who was the healthy spouse living at home, can have quite a bit more in assets. Now, the reason why Mary wants to qualify is that from the day that Mary is financially eligible for Mass Health, um, from then on in, she'll need to pay her regular income to, ma to the nursing home. But Mass Health will pay all the rest. To use as an example today, uh, I'm going to have you assume that Frank and Mary have the following assets. They own a home that's worth uh, $300,000. Frank has an IRA uh, that's worth $150,000. Um, they have an annuity that's worth $100,000. It's Frank's annuity, although Mary is named as the death beneficiary. And they have cash worth about $75,000. So their total assets are worth uh, $625,000. So as soon, going back to what I, what I had mentioned earlier, Mary needs to show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets in order to qualify for Mass Health. But Frank, on the other hand, can own the home itself no matter what its equity. The, literally, the home can have an equity of a million dollars. doesn't make any difference. Um, he can have other cash or cash equivalent assets equal to with a value of no higher than $123,600. But most importantly, he can have unlimited income. Unlimited income. Therefore, if Frank and Mary came in to me today and said, oh, or if Frank came in to me because Mary was stuck in the nursing home and Frank was saying, we need to qualify Mary for Mass Health, what I would tell him is, okay, all we have to do is, first of all, we need to transfer all of the assets to just you, or all of the assets other than $2,000. So, effectively, all of the assets. So, we would leave one bank account, typically in joint names with Mary and Frank. That will be the account into which Mary's Social Security check will continue to be deposited. 
Once all the assets are shifted to Frank, we know that the house is safe because the house is non-countable no matter what its equity. The issue at that point is that Frank has uh, other assets that are worth more than $123,600. So we need to do something about those. First, um, there is the IRA. So Frank has an IRA worth $150,000. Well, the goal of the exercise here is we need to tr convert Frank's countable assets into non-countable income streams. And the way we do that is, I, is by having Frank buy one or more annuities. As long as those annuities all call for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than Frank's actuarial life expectancy. And by actuarial life expectancy, not just anybody's actuarial life expectancy, the one that MassHealth uses. Uh, so you're going to need to know what that is. For example, his life expectancy, if he were 89 for mass health purposes, is about five years. As long as the annuities call for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than Frank's life actuarial life expectancy, and as long as he can't cash in the annuity and get the money out, the purchase of that annuity is a conversion, as far as MassHealth is concerned, from a countable asset to a non-countable income stream. So the day after he, Frank, for example, takes his IRA and converts it into that annuity, um, he has converted an asset, which would be countable, of $150,000 into this income stream, which is not. Now, one of the questions that often comes up regarding this particular asset is, well, oh my God, we don't wanna, I don't wanna cash in my annuity, or my, my uh, IRA rather, because I'm gonna have to pay the taxes on that money. Well, actually, you don't have to do that. Frank, in this case, could convert his annuity from one which he could get all of the money from right away to one in which he is simply getting an income stream without that being a taxable event to Frank. So that conversion is not gonna cause him to have to pay taxes immediately on that $150,000. Uh, as a result of the conversion, because these payments have to come back to him over a term that is shorter than his life expectancy, he may be getting the money back faster and during that term will be having to pay the taxes faster. But that is an insignificant result compared to the benefit of qualifying Mary for Mass Health. So that's the IRA. The annuity. I am assuming in this case that this annuity that he has for $100,000 is one that he can simply cash in. Now it may be that he'll need to pay a penalty for that um, and there may be a sur surrender penalty. Um, but in, in that case, you'll need to cash it in, pay the, pay the penalty. Um, there may be some taxes owed as a result of that annuity and therefore he'd have to pay the tax. And then he would take the rest of the money and use it to buy another annuity, not the same annuity as the one that was purchased with the IRA money, that will be distinct but a separate annuity. Finally, he has $75,000 in cash, you may recall. So he would do the same thing with that cash. He may bundle that cash with the cash he got out from, the, from his other annuity. Uh, he may buy standalone individual annuities. He can do any of these things. And the, the main thing to understand is once Frank has done all that, the day after he has converted his cash or his other countable assets, not counting the house, uh, into one or more annuities, thereby reducing his remaining money to below $123,600, Mary is financially eligible for Mass Health. Now, but you'd say to yourself, oh, but Mary hasn't qualified for Mass Health yet. Well, that's okay. From the day that Frank's assets are correctly structured and therefore Mary is eligible for Mass Health, Mary will have until the last day of the third month following the day on which she has become financially eligible to apply. And that application will be retroactive to the day on which Mary became financially eligible. Now you're saying to yourself, that's awfully complicated. Uh, and it is, unfortunately, and that's one of the reasons why you wanna to talk to somebody about it before you do this. But for example, say that, that Mary decided to qualify, or, or Mary needed to transfer all of these assets out because it was April and say that as a result of these, this restructuring, Frank has bought all of his annuities, thereby reducing his total assets to less than $123,600, and it's now April 15th. As of that day, Mary would be financially eligible for MassHealth. 
and that payment from MassHealth to the nursing home will be retroactive to that day as long as Mary has, has filed or applied for MassHealth by the last day of the third month following that date in April. So she would have until the last day of May, June, July, the last day of July, as long as she's applied for MassHealth by that day, the MassHealth is going to be retroactive to that day in April when these assets were restructured. Therefore, stepping back, going back to Frank's question, what does he have to do or what does Mary have to do in order to make sure that if one of them needs to qualify for MassHealth quickly, they can? The answer is nothing. The answer is nothing. Uh, there is a kind of a follow-up um, issue with that, though, which is how, does, how do these folks make sure that if one of them dies, say Frank dies and then Mary needs to qualify for MassHealth, that, that Mary will be able to qualify. Because if Frank dies and leaves all of his assets to Mary, which is pretty much Frank and Mary's standard estate plan, then upon his death, Mary will have all these assets. And Mary will not be able to qualify for MassHealth because her assets will be way over $2,000. So she'll have to spend all that money down. Once she has spent it down, she'll be able to qualify because Mary can own the home and qualify for MassHealth. But MassHealth will, at that point, put a lien on that home in order to assure that following Mary's death, MassHealth gets reimbursed for whatever it is that MassHealth paid on her behalf. If Frank and Mary want to avoid that unfortunate situation, and most clients do, then what Frank will do is write a will or change his will so as to specify that at the time of his death, any assets that he owns, instead of going to Mary, will go and trust for Mary's benefit. As, as you may know, if you've seen some of these shows, we always use the example in, this, in Frank and Mary's case that they have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. So it, at that point, or in his will, he can say that one or more of those children will actually act as the trustees or as the trustee for the benefit of Mary. As long as Frank has, has, has redone his will to have those provisions and, has made, and make sure that before he dies, it can be the day before he dies, it can be the hour before he dies, that before he dies, any of the assets he wants protected are transferred into his name. He can be assured that the moment he dies, these assets will all be safe for Mary's benefit. Now, I just want to mention one other thing regarding to Frank and Mary's issues here. If Frank and Mary are both alive and Frank restructures the assets the way I described by buying one or more annuities, and those annuities call for equal monthly payments during a term that is shorter than Frank's life expectancy, and if Frank then dies, before he has received all of these payments back, MassHealth will have a lien on the remaining payments to get repaid for amounts that they may have paid on Mary's behalf during her lifetime. The only way that Frank can avoid that problem is, by, is when he is purchasing the annuities that I described earlier, purchasing annuities for a term that is as short as possible, thereby minimizing the likelihood or the possibility that he might die before all the payments have been returned to him. So Frank, to your question, as I've told you before, and that's why you are asking again, because people forget this, you don't need to do anything while you and Mary are alive. You don't have to divest yourself of control of assets and wait five years. You don't have to do any of that stuff as long as you're alive, because at the last minute, either one of you can qualify for mass health. What you and Mary may want to do though, is make sure that your wills are clear so that upon the death of one of you, any of the assets that is owned by that spouse is, is held in trust for the benefit of the surviving spouse. That way you can protect Mary and Mary can protect you against the possibility that she might die first. She can protect you and your assets for, so that in the end, they'll end up going to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. and not to anybody else. So thanks for the question, Frank. Thank you for listening. I hope this clarified this issue and I look forward to talking to you again about other issues.